Hello! My name is Connor and welcome to the Hobby Noob. Today I'm going to be combining three of my favourite things Warhammer, Monster Hunter, and massive dinosaurs. I'm going to be painting this Seraphon Carnosaur to look like one of my favourite monsters from the Monster Hunter series, the Tigrex. I'm going to start by priming this model black and then giving it a zenithal spray from the top using white ink. I've used my airbrush for this because I'm still really new to airbrushing and I want some more practice at it. This can however be done using a spray can if you haven't made the jump to the airbrush yet. The zenithal highlight helps not only highlight the higher parts of the model but it also means the darkest recesses are still left relatively untouched and so are great for building up shadows. Next I'm going to use Citadel Avalanche Sunset for the main scales of this dino as it's a really nice orangey yellow, which is exactly what I want for my Tigrex scheme. It will need a couple of thin coats, but actually goes on very well over the white ink. While I'm doing the scales, I wanted to tell you a little bit about my channel. So, my name is Connor, and my pile of shame is getting silly. I love collecting miniatures, mostly Warhammer, but lately, a lot of them have been built and maybe undercoated, but never painted. I can't really tell you why this is. I'd love to blame my super hectic lifestyle, but, in reality, my motivation has been waning and the endless sea of grey plastic just keeps growing. So I've decided to motivate myself to paint more by making some videos and sharing them with you guys. But feel free to follow me on my little journey, maybe you'll learn stuff, or maybe you can give me some hints and tips to improve my painting. After the main body, I painted the hands feet and tail tip using dryad bark, following the colour scheme of the Tigrex. The underbelly was painted using Rakar flesh. Now this is where my zenithal highlight didn't really work too well, as this took three or four thin coats for a decent coverage. Next time I might go for a grey base coat with a white zenithal to limit the time this step takes. The claws were simply done in Eshin Grey. The mouth and tongue were painted in corn red. And the teeth were painted using Wraithbone. After this, I painted the rope using Rhinox Hide and the gold parts were painted using Retributor Armour. I then decided to dry brush dryad bark with a brown matte other colours on the hands, feet and tail tip. This helps the colours blend in together a bit better. This is also done using Avalan Sunset where the yellow scales matte the brownie beige underbelly. The entire model was then given a wash using Agrax Earthshade, which looks super messy and it kind of is, but it really helps define the scales and create shadows and depth. Once the wash dried, I gave the scales a dry brush of Avalan Sunset, which didn't really seem to do a lot. So I decided to use Zandri Dust and dry brushed all over the yellow scales, as well as the hands, feet and tail tip. 
Again, this helps to quickly highlight the scales, but also brings the brown and yellow together to make it look a bit more natural. I also dry brushed over the ropes as well, using the same colour. Now we go on to the iconic blue stripes of the Tigrex. I'm using Teclis blue for this, but I'm going to paint in some lines intermittently across the yellow scales. I'm not being super careful with this because I think it looks a lot more natural if the blue is overlapping some of the scales. If I focus on specific scales, I feel it looks a little too uniform. I also used this blue to block out the top of the castle's head, trying my best not to hit the gold crest, but I wasn't as careful as planned. This can be tied up later using our original gold colour. Once this is done, I do some very quick highlights using Dawnstone on the claws. Wraithbone on the teeth, which also helps to cover up where the wash might have stained the teeth a little too much. do a quick dry brush of Lothurn blue on the stripes and head, again being as careful as I can not to hit the gold parts. I used corn red to bring out the eyes of my big old dinosaur and off camera I did a little dot of Mephisto red as a highlight. Now, for my favourite bit of any build and paint job, we're going to get onto the base. I found this log in my terrain box and I decided that I wanted the Carnosaur to look like it was bounding through the jungle, stepping over trees and foliage with zero care in the world. I start by finding a good position for the log and then super gluing it into place. For my jungle foliage, I use a homemade mix of the inside tea bags some Italian seasoning and some dried grass. I slap some watered down PVA onto the base and sprinkle it on, trying to get full coverage. I then use the same watered down PVA mix and drip it onto the base, making sure to cover all the basic material. This will help the material stick to the base and also lessens the possibility of bits of the basing mix falling off. 
I leave this overnight to dry to get a rock hard finish. Again, it gets the usual treatment of black primer and white ink xenophil and then I paint the leaf litter with watered down rhinoxide to help the paint flow all over the base. Whilst this is drying, I use wildwood contrast paint on the log, making sure the contrast doesn't pull too much on the flatter bark area. I dry brush the whole log using Mornfan Brown. Then I dry brush sanitary dust, but only on the broken parts of the log, leaving the bark. By this point, the base material should be dry, and I'll hit it with a quick wash of our rags about the shade. I want to add some colour to the base, so I use the Dirty Down Moss Effect, which I think is an absolutely amazing product. I stipple this onto the log, and you can see as it starts to dry, it creates this lovely moss effect with a minimal effort. You can see here just how quickly it dries and it leaves this amazing effect. I dry brush the leaf litter using various tones of browns and greens. I use Mornfang Brown for the whole base. Then Death World Forest on some areas. Lothburn forest and some of the larger grass bits. This adds the impression of small bits of foliage trying to grow amongst the mulch of dead leaves on the jungle floor. I had a few grass tufts here and there. as well as this little flower to add some more colour. I super glue them onto the base. And then paint the base rim black. I then use some more grass tufts and some green stuff world laser cut plants to finish off the base and put my dinosaur in a cool jungle environment.
And with that, my Tigress themed castle is complete. This was a really fun project to work on and I'm really pleased with how it turned out. There are definitely a few things I can improve on in the future, but progress is progress is progress. It's one more model built and painted and the pile of shame is one model lighter. I really appreciate everyone who's watched this video and if you have enjoyed it, feel free to give it a like or share it with your friends. If you have liked the video and you'd like to join me on my adventure to work through my hobby heap, please consider subscribing to my channel. It really would mean a lot to me. Thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you next time on the hobby heap.